Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 4th of October 2022 but before we begin here are a few important announcements Baiju's Exam Prep has launched its official Telegram channel if you wish to stay up to date with all our initiatives and also current affairs join our channel by scanning this QR code or by clicking on the link given in the description box below Also a gentle reminder to tune into our YouTube channel tomorrow at 8 p.m. for episode 88 of International Relations this week. We have this initiative every Wednesday at 8 p.m. so do tune in. Another important announcement is that we will not have the Hindu newspaper analysis tomorrow as there will be no issue of the Hindu newspaper. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Consider the following pairs of folk dances and the states of origin number 1 lambadi rajasthan number 2 garba gujarat number 3 laho tripura number 4 dhol cholam andhra pradesh how many of these pairs are correctly matched what is the context this snippet from the hindu newspaper today has a mention of garba since there is a mention of garba in the newspaper we have taken up a question on famous folk dances of different regions in india See garba is the dance form that originated in Gujarat region. Traditionally it is performed during the 9 day Hindu festival of Navratri. An image of goddess Durga is placed in the middle of concentric rings and the people dance around the center, right? Now coming back to our question, Lambadi is a folk dance of Banjara tribe and it originated in Anupur village of Andhra Pradesh. So one becomes incorrect. Garba as we just discussed originated in Gujarat region so number 2 is correct now coming to laho laho is a dance performed by the women folk of meghalaya it is famous among the na tribal community of meghalaya another important point to remember about laho dance is it is not supported by any musical instruments instead a recitation supports the dance so this is also incorrect moving on to dhol cholam Dhol Cholam is a drum dance and it is one of the dances performed during Holi in Manipur. So this also becomes incorrect. Therefore the right answer to our question here would be option A one only since only Garba is correctly matched. Here are a few other folk dances of the states that we just discussed so do go through them as well. For example Bhamakalpam, Veeranatyam, Dapu and Lambadi are famous folk dances of Andhra Pradesh. Nongkrem and Laho of Meghalaya, Dhol Cholam, Thangta, Lai Haroba and Pang Cholam of Manipur, Garba, Dandya Ras, Bhavai of Gujarat. Moving on to question number 2. Consider the following statements with respect to National Means Come Merit Scholarship Scheme or NMMSS. It is a centrally sponsored scheme. The scheme envisages award of 1 lakh fresh scholarships every year to selected students of class 6 to class 9. The scholarships are awarded to students directly into their bank accounts by direct benefit transfer through public financial management system. How many of the given statements is or are incorrect? What is the context? The Union Ministry of Education has extended the application submission deadline for National Means Come Merit Scholarship scheme. Since there is a mention of this scheme in the Hindu newspaper today, we've taken up this question for discussion. So what exactly is this National Means Come Merit Scholarship scheme? See, this is a central sector scheme which was launched in the financial year 2008 and 9. and this scheme was launched to award scholarships to meritorious students of economically weaker sections to reduce dropouts in class 8 its primary intent was to encourage students to continue the study at a secondary stage so every year 1 lakh fresh scholarships are awarded to selected students of class 9 and their continuation to class 10 and 12 for study in a state government or government aided or local body schools under this scheme Now you may ask how are these students given scholarships say the selection of these students for awards of scholarship is made through an examination that is conducted by the state government the scholarships are then disbursed by the state bank of india directly into the bank accounts of these students through direct benefit transfer on a quarterly basis right now coming back to our question 
statement number 1 becomes incorrect because this is a central sector scheme and not a centrally sponsored scheme number 2 is also incorrect because the scholarships are awarded to students of class 9 only and finally statement number 3 as we discussed is correct the scholarships are disbursed through the direct benefit transfer therefore the right answer to our question would be option b two statements only because the question is asking us for incorrect statements moving on to question number 3 Consider the following statements with respect to purchasing managers index or PMI. Number 1, it is an economic indicator derived from annual survey of private sector companies. Number 2, PMI is a number from 0 to 100. Number 3, if the PMI of the previous month is higher than the PMI of the current month, it implies that the economy is contracting. How many of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today says that the PMI or purchasing managers index for September points towards a deceleration in the pace at which manufacturing is expanding in India. See, while the PMI was 56.2 in August, it is recorded at 55.1 in September. What is this PMI? What does these numbers mean? Let us understand all of this as we discuss this question. First of all, about PMI See this PMI is a survey based economic measure that asks the respondents about changes in their perception of key business variables as compared with the previous month. So PMI measures survey responses from businesses and is used to gauge economic activity in the country. The most common PMI surveys are manufacturing PMI and services PMI. The objective of PMI is to provide information about the current and future business conditions to the company's decision makers, to analysts and also to the investors. See, investors use this PMI surveys as leading indicators of economic health. Please understand that this PMI is a number ranging from 0 to 100. A number above 50 means there is an expansion and a score below 50 denotes contraction and if the PMI is at 50 it indicates that there is no change right now who comes out with this PMI there are three principal producers of PMI and they are Institute of Supply Management or ISM or Singapore Institute of Purchasing and Materials Management and the S&P Global now coming back to the question Statement number 1 here would be incorrect because this is a monthly survey and PMI is calculated every month it is not an annual survey Statement number 2 as we discussed is correct it is a number from 0 to 100 and coming to statement number 3 Statement number 3 says if the PMI of the previous month is higher than the PMI of the current month it implies that the economy is contracting Here we discussed that the PMI was 56.2 in August and 55.1 in September right which implies that the economy is contracting why when two consecutive months are compared and the PMI of previous month is higher than that of the current month it implies that the economy is contracting therefore the right answer to our question would be option B two statements only moving on to question number 4 Turtuk recently in the news is located in option A West Bank territory option B Donetsk region option C Golan Heights option D Nubra Valley the answer to this question is option D Nubra Valley see Turtuk is a small village sandwiched between Karkoram range and Himalayas it is close to the line of control between India and Pakistan in the Baltistan region This remote village is situated in Nubra Tehsil of Leh district on the banks of Shok River. Please note that this village was under Pakistani control until the war of 1971 when the Indian army captured this village. Also note that this is one of the gateways to the Siachen glacier. Why this question? The Prime Minister of India has lauded the efforts of the people of Turtuk for their participation in Swachh Bharat mission. This article also says that the people of Turtuk have not seen Swachh Bharat mission as just a campaign but also as a medium to integrate them to the rest of India. So now this remote village of Turtuk has become a shining example of Swachh Bharat abhiyan. 
Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2019. In the context of India, which of the following factors is or are contributor or contributors to reducing the risk of a currency crisis? Number 1. The foreign currency earnings of India's IT sector. Number 2. Increasing the government expenditure. Number 3. Remittances from Indians abroad. First of all, what does currency crisis mean? It means that the Indian rupee is weakening and the dollar is strengthening at a rapid level, right? The rupee-dollar exchange rate is determined by market forces of supply and demand, we all know this. So now, in order to strengthen the currency, inflow of dollar has to be encouraged, correct? Now let us take a look at each of these scenarios one by one. In this scenario, foreign currency earning can help with inflow of foreign currency. Correct? So this can help in reducing the risk of a currency crisis. Right? Now coming to statement number 3 which is remittances from Indians abroad. Remittances will also help in the inflow of foreign currency. So number 3 is also correct. But number 2 here becomes irrelevant. If raising government expenditure results in excessive printing of rupee, this might backfire and also increase the risks of a currency crisis. Therefore, option B, 1 and 3 only would be the right answer. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is credit default swaps. This article in the Indian Express newspaper talks about credit default swaps and hence we've taken up this topic for discussion today. First of all, what exactly is a credit default swap? A credit default swap is a financial derivative or a contract. This contract allows an investor to swap or offset his credit risk with that of another investor. Let me simplify this. Suppose I am a lender and I am worried that the borrower will default on the loan taken from me. Then I can use this credit default swap to offset the risk I might have to face, right? So if I have to define it in a simple manner, credit default swap would be an insurance against default risk by a particular company. And this company here is called the reference entity and the default is called a credit event. So to understand this clearly, there are a few terms you must know. So this credit default swap or the contract is a contract between two parties and these two parties are called protection buyer and protection seller. So this lender will buy the protection and hence is called as the protection buyer. Now, under this contract, the protection buyer is compensated for any loss occurring from a credit event in a reference instrument, right? In return, the protection buyer will make periodic payments to the protection seller. So when there is a default, the buyer receives the face value of the bond or loan from the protection seller. What is the seller's benefit here, you may ask? From the seller's perspective, the credit default swap provides a source of easy money if there is no credit event. So if the reference entity does not default on its loan payment, then the periodic payments received from the protection buyer is easy money for protection seller, right? Let me explain with an example. Assume that there are two parties, Tom and Harry. Both of them enter into a five-year credit default swap. In this, Tom is the protection buyer and Harry is the protection seller. Let us assume that Tom has lent Jerry a loan of rupees 50 crore and now Tom has entered into a credit default swap with Harry and he agrees to pay 50 lakhs annually to the protection seller for the CDS. So if Jerry does not default, the protection buyer keeps on paying 50 lakhs to Harry every year and this is easy money for Harry, right? But if Jerry defaults on his payment, then Tom has to be fully compensated by Harry. So this is how a credit default swap will help an investor to swap or offset his credit risk with that of another investor. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.